I have been stocking up on my favorites because I am fed up with new brands that already have no name even the moment they release stuff. I'm fed up with alleged 20,000 fragrance releases a year. I am so done. I feel like huge allergic to reaction to anything new that is not thought through, that is just like, what? Who, why would I even remember? Why would I even remember any of these names? A waste of time. A waste of time, that's how I'm feeling right now, so be it. So, it doesn't mean that I don't ever buy a new bottle of perfume. Actually, a bit of a reverse. I started stocking up on things that I love and things that are kind of stood the test of time. So the first installation today, I'm gonna show you a haul of things that I either am getting them for the second, third, fifth time, things that I always wanted to buy because I had decants or wore them at a certain time and didn't repurchase and repurchase now. And I'll show you things, a few things of that kind from my collection so you have at least a reference point. First and foremost, in my forever search of lilacs, um, I have gotten myself a backup and I think I already showed it, so I'm gonna be brief. I got Jill Sander Style to me this is a very well-rounded creamy lilacs. What the marketing says that it's a very well-rounded vanilla ice cream plus white florals like freesia and gardenia. Love it. I'm just going to things that I know I love or things that I always wanted to try and didn't somehow was distracted by the new and newness and couldn't do it for some reason. I used up what is like almost a third of Jill Sander Softly Serene. And this is a flanker, kind of looks uh, like they're simply line, but it's softly serene and it's a, like a lilac-y blue uh, cup. To me, this is the smell of meditation. This is a very nourishing, calming silence of a perfume. This is what I wish Juliet has a gun, no perf not a perfume smell like, then, I would buy that one. i still not a customer. I don't get it. It's, I, I do smell it and I don't get it. The Softly Serene by Jill Sander to me is the mindfulness in a bottle. It's quiet, it's delightful, it's sophisticated, and it's, it barely whispers. It's obviously not for people who are over... Well, actually, I do overspray this one. But it's not for people who can't smell anything and therefore they go for Baccarat Rouge, Fleur Narcotique, uh, you know, Creed Aventus and all other powerhouses, you know, the, the stinks so-called. Because I find that people who gravitate towards such loud perfumes don't smell they, they don't have sensitive noses and this is why they they feel they need more more and more it's almost like a sugar addiction the more uh, sugar you use in your food the less you taste the sugar so this is if you're like that not for you just just know that you might not even smell anything if you have a sensitive nose if you like subtlety and nuance you know if you're more of a like a sushi person than a let's say poutine uh, person or you know like fries with a burger with mayonnaise with ketchup with everything on it including smoked paprika and i don't know curry and i don't know what then you know that's it's just a different taste i love it for, for how asmr ish this is so i got myself a backup while i could F2. This Jill Sander fragrances to me withstood the test of time with flying colors. And this is not even it. I did see that uh, online they still have their, their flanker, which is Touch of Leather by Jill Sander, available. And I grabbed it. I had a bottle. I loved it. And I gifted it to friends of mine who use it between him and her. It's one of the most elegant, well-mannered, elegant leather-ish scents. It doesn't smell like boots. It doesn't smell like something burning. It's not sweet. It's just this very elegant... I don't know how else to describe it. It's so well-mannered. It's like an Hermes bag. 
it's it's such a good perfume so i got it replenished it in my collection this is my second bottle and another one that i recommend but it's harder to find is the flanker that is called touch of mandarin also by jill sander have two super happy about it going back to my roots every time i wear these i just feel like i'm such a put together luscious you know the girl who's got money of her own it just like to the T, just everything is just so for my comforts. Love it. I've mentioned it in the workout fragrances, but I'll mention it again. I got myself three testers by uh, Kenzo. And the one that's worth mentioning in my not so humble opinion is uh, Le Parc Kenzo, Le Kenzo. It's the water. This one is marketed toward women. I love both versions. I wear both versions. Kenzo, in my view, is a very unisex brand. And it's again, it just brings back good, the good memories. I just finished up the sample of an oldie, like a vintage Le Parc Kenzo. And I just miss that aquatic lemony zestiness that Kinzo knew so well how to do that I got myself it again. And I couldn't be happier. It so well replaces half of these refreshing colognes that are flooding the market. It just works. And I got myself, what, like 100 mil for a fairly affordable price. If you don't want, like, obviously you get get one for 40 here, one for 30 here, another one for 50 there, another one for 60 here, you will still spend a fortune. This is why if you want to try things without cluttering your shelves, I put this online and you can get yourself a sampler or get yourself a generous decan that will last you a month and then you can move on to greener pastures or actually shell your hard-earned money for a full-size bottle. This, what in my opinion, de decans are for. I'm installing it is even a firmer policy this year that until I finish the decant, I'm in no business of buying a bottle. For most things, with a few exceptions where I know, I know I'll like it. And this is one of those, oh my God, Oxygen Lanvin. The youngsters will not even remember this, but I'll tell you, let mama tell you the story. When Oxygen by Lanvin came to the market, lactonic perfumes did not exist. You could not get a believable milky fragrance to save your life. That was not a thing. Fresh fragrances were all of the rage. That was the era of uh, uh, early 2000s. And Kelvin Klein, Davidoff Coldwater, which I do have here. Yeah, this. It's yet another fragrance that we'll, we'll talk about it in a second. Stood the test of time. So this was one of those. It was like a zonic victory. It was a paragon at the time. It was a bestseller. The Oxygen by Lanvin, back in the day, was the, uh, the, the, the fresh, almost bitter smell of ozone after the rain. I'm sure any of you who don't live in the city or who at least had a chance to experience the freshness of ozonic air after the rain ended will remember that. So this was it. Everybody's like, oh my God, it's almost milky. Like, it doesn't translate as lactonic or milky now that we actually have the modern chemistry to recreate lactonic fragrances. But it has this little bit of like vanilla sweetness on the background of zesty, almost bitter freshness. Think Dolce Gabbana light blue, but even fresher, even more abstract and even more bitter. It's probably the most well-cut reference fresh ozonic fragrances that I know of. That's a bold claim. I'm going to stand by it. Uh, if you can still find it online, it's not going to be super duper expensive. But again, if you want to know what the ozonic, what are the fresh oceanic fragrances of old era, before the old mineral, salty and witty, um, oceanic perfumes came into the market in late 2015, 16 and such. This is what freshness was all about. 
I, I always wanted it. I didn't have, I was so poor. I had no money to have more than like one or two. And most of the time I would be dealing with like little splash miniatures. That's, that's what I could save money for. I always wanted it. It was the heat of sales. I never had a chance. Now I have it and I freaking love it. So good. If now one of these agonist or Atelier Bloem or like one of those modern Scandinavian niche brands release something like that, it would be selling like hotcakes. Hotcakes. It's just such a good base ozonic perfume. Love it. All right. Since we're on the subject, I'll show you a few from my collection that are repeats and the designer perfumes that I think are just excellently withstood the test of time. As mentioned, Davidoff Cool Water. I recently came across a very expensive niche scent. I'm not gonna say it yet. I'm gonna save it till the last drops when I finish that one up. It's like $300 a bottle. That was nearly a dupe for Davidoff Cool Water. I was like, are you for real? Well, I guess, yeah, like there's not many of those elephants like me who are still alive, who are still blogging, who still remember what this was about. So you probably can repackage the same thing and instead of like, I think every gas station has the Vidov Cool Water. I kid you not. This is like what, $7, $15? And repackage that in the same, sell the same fresh, sparkly, it's like a watermelon soda. I love it. It's both slightly powdery, like it's a little bit like a what we think of a detergent smell. But this is like watery, fresh watermelon scent. The molecule responsible for that is called cologne. Or cologne. Tomato, tomato. I love it. I have this little teeny baby that was gifted to me by a subscriber just for the reference and I do use it every once in a while. Every time, every once in a while you do want to smell like a fresh watermelon soda and that's beautiful. And that does not cost $300, which is a win in my book. All right, a few others that I think are just excellent. I repurchased this. I had it a while ago. And I decided, you know what? After searching for so long for fresh musky roses, I am nearly done. And like the lychee air kind of roses. Lancome Miracle. It is dated in a way that the white musks here are not sour and are not skin-like, but more detergent-like, meaning soapy. And they're soapy because that's what, what that's what kind of flavorings and uh, olfactory molecules, you know, the aromatic molecules were put in the detergents 10, 15, 20 years ago. And then they actually, it's a funny story. First, they were created to um, odorate, to add flavor to just modern household chemistry, kind of like objects like detergents, anything to clean or odorize your apartment or home with. And they became so popular that they made it into fine perfumery. This is a very unlikely success story. So Lancome Miracle is peony rose with a little bit of fruity sweetness and fresh soapy detergent type of musks. I freaking love it. it it's even a little bit more bitter. If I could collaborate with Lancome, I would make a flanker of Miracle. I would make it this like death metal anime flanker, you know, that's just as even more of a floral punch and more bitterness that it just like, mm. that's what I would do if I could. So I think Miracle deserves a refreshing flanker with potentially black studs and a few interesting twists because I think that could bring it back into the forefront of conversation. Don't make it fruity. Don't fake. Don't make it that everyone likes it. Mm -mm. Make it more niche. Make it edgy. I think this, the time is ripe for the miracle to be reinvented.
love it, recommend it. After so much searching for something like that, pea, like kind of musky, soapy, peony, lychee rose, I, I opt for the miracle by Lancome. Good stuff. Okay, spent way too much on that. Move on. Another fresh, It's I think it's my fifth bottle. This is just a smell of orange soda. This is Fanta. Uh, Maschina, I love, love. Unapologetically synthetic, fun, flirty. It's just fizzy orange pop. Love it. And this is a little bit of this, again, just a little bit of this bitterness in there that makes it, <clears throat> it's just like, just a little bit of thorns. Love, 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 I love, love by Moschino. Good stuff. Keep buying it. We'll keep buying it. It's fun. It's just freaking fun. Good, good, good. And it's not too simplistic. You know what I mean? Like there are a bunch of mm, odorants that you can add and they smell just like yet another orange citrusy perfume. But this one has character and yet it's simple, friendly and fun. Mm. Amazing stuff. Forgot to mention another musky rose that it's like yet another repurchase for me. And I'm gonna confuse everyone, but I'm gonna be nerdy about it. This is Burberry body, but not the main one. It's a very particular flanker that I like. This is Burberry body tender eau de toilette. So it's their lightest water version of Burberry body tender. Don't ask me, I don't know why. That, this particular flanker is just everything to me. The classical Burberry body eau de parfum is too sweet. It's, it's not sweet, it's not gourmand. It's just compared to this one, that one, the attention is taken away a little bit. Here, it's just, it's, It's the paragon of what young British models are like to me. Those just young gazelles, just the nymphs that came out of, uh, of uh, dark forests of Brother Grimm's tales. There's just something so fragile, sensual and light about this rose. I cannot get enough of it. This is something that I keep repurchasing and I just bathe. Every time I get into Burberry Body Tender Eau de Toilette, I just bathe in it. It's addictive. Love it, love it, love it. It still translates beautifully. With Lancome Miracle, as I said before, it's a little bit dated because of the type of masks that they use and it's still the best on the market, in my opinion. I would just refresh it a little bit if I could. This one is just as good as ever. Like I can easily see Joe Malone, uh, Aaron, and all other these like breathing, sensual, niche, subtle niche brands just putting this, wrapping this, slapping in one fifty to two hundred dollars price tag on it, and this selling like hotcakes. Amazing. All right, a few other favorites, things that I repurchased. I'm just gonna briefly mention it because I cannot mention it. Kalash Eau Delicate. Not the most favored by Luca Turin as I'm reading his book about sense, but to me, this is just magical. There's something about my childhood that's hidden in this demure, soft floral that I cannot decode, but it just sends me places. So it's discontinued, it is expensive. I found on the gray market or secondary market, so to speak, uh, two bottles and I'm like guarding them like a hawk. Ah, oh, and the classical Kalesh has nothing to do with the Kalesh of Delicat. Uh, this is just, Hermes should re-release it as a standalone fragrance. It, to me, it has a lot of character, but it's again, it's for a shrinking violet type of person like me. Like I'm, you know, like I double between fire breathing dragon and demon and a librarian. That's just, I don't know, that's the dichotomy of my life. For the librarian part of me, ah, oh, nothing. I have so many florals, really. There are so many and nothing comes close to what this is. And I can't explain it. It's 
magic. It's magic of my childhood that's hidden there somewhere. If you have a similar scent or perfume that does it to, for you, please leave a comment. Let me know. I, I need to know that I'm not alone, that I'm not completely losing my marbles, even though all the evidence says that I probably am. A very soft, very fluffy, and a little, uh, and a little, I don't say prickly, but a little bit of this, like, playful banter that's hidden in this bottle is La Mere Perla by La Perla. I was given a decant of it by my subscriber who said like, I can't smell it, it's nothing, I don't understand what's the point. I worked on that 8 mil, fell in love and purchased myself, a, this one came from Britain. At the time, La Mere Perla by La Perla could not be purchased in the United States. A lot of their releases were European-centric. I ordered this from Great Britain, overpaid grossly, just to have La Mia Perla by La Perla. This such is such a lingerie scent with a little of the, the a little bit of a pink pepper at the beginning. Just, just a little bit of the just like just a little of a banter there. And when I found it in online stores in the United States, I got myself two more bottles. I give you not two more bottles, I have backups. It's one of the best cuddling scents. It's Netflix and chill if you're really trying to, you know, open, your, open yourself up for a warmer and closer embrace. Something quite similar, and this is my second bottle, is C. Lolita by Lolita Limpica. Lolita Limpica used to be famous in, I don't know, 10 years ago in the perfume community. And they were fairly affordable. They were playful. They were owning the stage, man. And now they're like nearly gone. This is even more, 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 like thousand times more pink pepper. It's very peppery and fresh and flirtatious in the way that subtle romantic vanilla and tonka bean can be playful. It's only sweet enough that it's not absent of character, and yet it's like smelling aromatic, semi-sweet pepper. I love it. This is flirty. This is, to me, very Spanish somehow. I just... I feel like that's what Spanish girls remind me of. Like every once in a while when I'm privileged to visit Spain and I see like those like 18, 16, you know, 20 year olds, there's something about Spanish girls that's just special and very different. And that's what this playful, vivacious, almost a little loud but lighthearted spirit that they embody. Si Lolita by Lolita, Limpica, fun affordable and fun. I actually prefer their Eau de Toilette version, which is a matte bottle. This is Eau de Parfum, a little bit sweeter, a little bit longer lasting, but Eau de Toilette is even more peppery. It's even more, it has more of these gorgeous, playful, cheeky opening. So when I'm finished with that and I'm nearly, I only have a third left, I might... I might repurchase myself an eau de toilette again. And that would be my third one. Did I mention with you by Salvador Dali? My interest in this house is very nostalgia driven because those were the fragrances that I could afford back in the day. And I fell in love with Laguna. It was a while ago, but it's to this day, it's a very niche scent and a very affordable lineup. It's not exactly complex, but it's unusual. To this day, nothing so salty, breathing, and minty. Nothing stands in my collection. Nothing compares to Laguna. And the bottles are still unparalleled in their creative and kind of like vanity table worthiness, the value that they bring. So probably my fifth bottle, and I have a backup, I do. And I kind of just use it sparingly um, here and there. It's one of those fresh aromatics that is neither green 
no bitter, no oceanic. It's just this like fluff with minty, bergamoty fog. Uh, this is my third or fourth bottle. This is Purple Light by Salvador Dali, Soapy Lilacs. I mostly use it in Nostalgic Lilac scent and I use it on linens because it's soapy. It's very soapy to my nose. So it works beautifully as a home scent. Don't quite wear it as a personal scent, but I go through these like nobody's business. Um, a very historic fragrance that I use sparingly but with great pleasure is Le Fon, Jungle Le Fon by Kinzo. This is very different from their fresh ones. It's like two complete opposites. This is like oriental deep spices and as many of such fragrances are now being released in the niche market, this just reminds me that you just cannot go with wrong with classics. I cannot tell you how many niche samples I went through. Oh, Darling Nikki by Wilhelm Perfumery comes to mind. That just kept convincing me that I already have Le Fon Kinzo. And the bottle is more creative and more, again, showcase worthy. The fragrance has pedigree and it's frankly more affordable than most of those niche newbies that did nothing better just rewrapped it and slapped a much higher price tag on what's already is a part of olfactory history this is one of those things that people start the exploration of oriental which i think is now is a bad word uh those asian indian spices with with kind of gourmand hints that's where you start. There is Samsara, which I would say probably not the best start. There is obviously Shalimar, but you will have to find the right, right vintage, which is in itself a bit of, it's a bit of a hassle. There is always opium, but even that you gotta, you gotta put your money into either the vintage or or, or, or the Parfum, because like they have so many flunkers and like Black Opium has nothing to do with, uh, with, with kind of oriental spices. So La Femme by Kinzo to me is as good of a start as any, and it will save you so much money down the road if you, first of all, it's gorgeous, right? It's gorgeous get yourself a bottle if you're not sure that you are a big fan of this kind of a whole family of fragrances get yourself a decant i i'm not sure if i put it online but if you ask me i will this is the great start from which i actually never departed i keep using up all of those expensive niche decants and saying like nope don't need it not gonna buy it i have this I wanted to show this and then I realized the whole line is discontinued and now it's becoming almost like a collector worthy stuff. It's Elizabeth and James that premiered in Sephora. This was a bestseller for a while. So many of you know this. This is Elizabeth and James Nirvana Bourbon. Bourbon. And that's what it is. It's vanilla, smoky vanilla with uh, the, the oak wood. And it's that it does smell like bourbon. Just the more aromatic, sweeter, more romantic version of it, not as stringent as alcohol the liquor is. I love it. I probably bought five of them and I a few were stolen from me. That's quite a story. I'll tell I'll save it. I'll save that story for another day. I was traveling. I was bringing a bunch of perfumes overseas. And since this was like one of one of the best sellers in the States, I really wanted to introduce it to a couple of my friends in, in Europe. And I was bringing a bunch of uh, boxes of this, Serge Latans and a few other things that were like harder to find there. And these are the ones who got stolen from my bag. I guess that says it all. If you can't find it and you like boozy, woody vanilla, it's one of the best ones. It's just now it's not as affordable as it used to be. And last but not least, 
is a celebrity fragrance. The only one I'm gonna show you tonight because other ones I tried and I kind of forgot about. This is a continual repurchase for me. And this is the OG original Jennifer Aniston by Jennifer Aniston. I fell in love with this comforting, sweet, kind of liquor, cocktail type of jasmine. And for the longest time ever, this was the sand that put me to sleep. When I felt overwhelmed, when I felt stressed, when I felt upset, I would put some of it before going to bed and I would just nest with it. There's, I smell it differently now. It seemed much sweeter to me back in the day, but I think uh, since then, and it's been like five years, and I've pretty much, I just purchased the biggest bottle I can so I don't have to worry about it. I hope it's not discontinued. Like I used to buy these like 12 bucks, you know, a bucket. It used to smell much sweeter to me, but then the last four years, I would say, I started pushing myself to learn and if I can't appreciate more gourmands. And now, you know, like the, the norm, the baseline has shifted quite a bit. Now to me, it's like a heavier sensual jasmine maybe a little bit metallic. I don't feel it the same way, but I still love it. But back in the day, that was like a sweet, heavy blanket of jasmine that I would just cover myself with. Beautiful scent, still in love. Will repurchase until I can't any longer. And that's where we are with me stocking up on tried and true uh, designer and affordable scents that withstood the test of time. Um, I showed you some of the things that I bought recently. Probably can still find them. If you can't, feel free to check out my links and try something for yourself before you cash on this and this and that. It really kind of ends up, unfortunately. Um, so try it before you buy it. Save yourself some money and introduce some much needed diversity into your rotation. Stress free and like tolerant. <laughs> more economical for your budget uh, and things that I have in my collection that I think are just as good if not better than some of the very expensive niche scents that are flooding the market these days it's like there's so much fatigue over all of the price policies and all of these proliferation of names flankers and you name it so I feel like sometimes it's helpful to go back to the basics and sometimes and you know realizing old dreams can feel even more precious. What, what was that? I don't remember, maybe it was like 50 bucks. It, it gave me so much pleasure. It's so much emotion. Like, I don't think any niche scent or from an unknown new Instagram niche brand could have done it, but Oxygen by Lanvin did. So, very happy about that. I am curious to hear what's been going on with your um, kind of moods when it comes to exploring scents, what are your tried and true designer scents or cheap, cheap scents, maybe celebrity fragrances that you just keep buying over and over again. And again, I also hope that dispel some of the myths that people who have a lot of perfumes don't use them. That's not true. I use what I buy. And as I mentioned to you, some things um, I've been through many bottles through and I still keep buying them, still keep using them. So. There is something to be said about diversity versus effective and functional usage. Sure, agreed. And yet, to me, it just works. I, I'm just the kind of person who always had a lot. Even though when I had no money, I would still have three. They would be the cheapest, 30 cents a nail polish. God knows what was in those mixtures, but I would have three versus one for 30 cents a bottle. Um, and the same with, with fragrances, with clothes, with everything. It's, I think it's like a personality thing. Some people prefer to have one and pay so many dollars for quality or something that they can reference. Like, oh, do you know this? Well, I have that too. It's a Dior fragrance. It's a Chanel fragrance. So it's more that they are trading brand tags than actually exploring their own olfactory taste. Fine. Not my thing, but, you know, it's people's money they they are free to spend it the way they see fit 
Um, there are people who stick with one so-called signature fragrance. I could never understand the concept. Like to me, one signature scent is that having no scent at all. How can you even smell it if it's just one thing? It's like only using one color as a painter. It's not possible. You need something else to make you appreciate what you have or noticing the nuances and the values about this, this, this thing. I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think about it. I don't want to be too dogmatic. I just know that from the standpoint of view where I am, I would be struggling to just keeping one, I mean, three. I would be struggling, okay, I would be struggling to keeping 10. That would be a major struggle let alone three or one. That's just, at that point, I just like, I don't need anything. It doesn't matter. Like when it's, it's, when it's such a reductionism at that point, if you have three or one, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's just my, like, it's where this, my thinking, where I'm coming from. I'm curious what you guys have to say about that. We'll be impatiently waiting for your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share on social media. I have created a dedicated Instagram account, meliora.perfums, for our daily dose of inspiration because my friends, some of the people that know me in real life on Instagram, meliora.maria, just can't handle the much perfume talk. So meliora.maria, Meliora if you want to, you know, be friends on social media, if you want a little bit more, because YouTube, it's, it's not like a daily cadence, but on Instagram, it's daily. Uh, if you just need like a little bit of a like short form injection of perfume inspiration, meliora.maria, it's where I live with all of my interests and peculiarities. Meliora.perfums, it's where we talk about perfumes. Uninhibited unlimited by any friends who don't appreciate perfumes as much as we do that's where we meet all right that's where we'll see each other i'll see you there and i'll see you here thank you so much for watching drop a comment let me know what you think i'll be waiting for you